among the things that we are seeing are sky high fuel prices. But how would you address this? What would you, what would be your policies, particularly with energy security, you know, going beyond this issue? In the past week or so, uh, since since the the war in Ukraine began, I have been espousing a policy of subsidizing all oil imports. Because I, uh, the, the idea is that, yes, transport is the first sector that's going to be affected, but everyone will be affected. And therefore, if we are to support everyone, we have to subsidize all oil imports, in my view. However, I have been crunching the numbers. We can't do it. We cannot afford it. It's that simple. So we have to focus now. Now, maliwanag, yung mga transport group talagang naghihing ano, dahil dito sa pagtas ng presyo ng, ng langis. Eh, pero alam naman natin, pag tumas ang presyo ng langis, sabay-sabay susunod na yung mga iba. So we have to focus in, uh, we have to focus in the, in the, the sectors that uh, will actually, you, that, will, that will mitigate the effects of uh, of the oil price rise um, perhaps well the there still exists the option of uh, perhaps giving a tax holiday on the excise tax on the excise taxes to uh, to the oil uh, for the oil imports however the pandemic is not over uh, we do not know what is going to happen next when each time we thought tapos na it came back and i we i'm sure all of us after christmas after the omicron hit at the end of january sabi natin siguro baka tapos na ito baka wala na but then we hear news now about korea about china about hong kong that they're locking down again so we have to we need the, those funds well, we don't, the government doesn't need the funds, people need the funds. And so we will still have to, we will still have to continue to collect as much as we can in uh, preparation for any possible, uh, any possible occurrence in terms of the pandemic. Baka may bagong strain, baka may babalik. But I don't think we will ever return to a time of lockdown anymore. Senator, just before we go on the break, uh, I was wondering if you can clarify your position on the oil price stabilization fund because I, there's been some talk in social media to report, and I don't know if you, you are. Of course, the appeal um, is that there will be subsidy when prices are high. Yes. But the downside is that prices will remain high because uh, when, when, when global prices dip. Yeah. And there's the argument, of course, that the market is always more efficient uh, in determining prices. Could you clarify your position? No, I think it, was, it, it, it is not to change the price of the oil. It's to change the rate of change. It is to, to try and mitigate the rate of change. So that, let's say, if uh, the price increase is from Sunday to Monday, instead of increasing the full, let's say we're going to increase by, I don't know, five pesos, let's say. Instead of doing it all in one shot, we do it slowly because we have a stabilization fund. There is no way to bring the price of oil down from the Philippines. Uh, we, we, we are at the, at the mercy of, uh, uh, of the oil producers. We in the Philippines, if I'm not mistaken, are 0.07% of the fossil fuel market. Uh, and therefore have very little influence on pricing. And we do not, we produce very little in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, oil, oil production. Malampay is about, uh, they, they say, will dry up in the next two or three years. Uh, so yes, it is a very, very big problem. But the OPSF that I propose and, uh, is really to lessen the impact. And uh, instead of making the impact instantaneous, uh, we will try to make it happen over a longer time to give businessmen, consumers more time to adjust and to plan. Uh, for the new regime of, uh, uh, of oil prices and oil products uh, that would come to the Philippines. Uh, Senator, we'll be time back. We'll have to take a short break oh, for now. Yes. It's okay, sorry, <laughs> Rolex. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I've become the symbol of the human... Uh...